want to show you guys how to make your own series identity by manipulating some well-known series. And these two well-known series come from examples from my Calculus 2 class that we looked at today. So the first is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of n over two to the n minus one. And the second is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n over two times n plus one. And we derived closed forms for these in class using a different method, like using a bit of an exploratory method. But that being said, I'll derive closed forms of these using like a straightforward direct method um, that is a bit cleaner, although that kind of kills some of the intuition. That being said, I think it's like maybe a nice presentation of the derivation. Then after we've got closed forms of those, we'll put the them together to build our own series identity, like I said. So let's notice that this first one is equal to the limit as x approaches one half of the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of n times x to the n minus one. But notice it looks like we've done term by term differentiation on this series. So we could maybe rewrite this as the limit as x approaches one half of the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the derivative with respect to x of x to the n. So notice if we take the derivative of x to the n, this is exactly what we get. But now we'll factor that derivative out. That'll leave us with the limit as x goes to half of the derivative with respect to x of the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n. But that sum is precisely a geometric series. So recognizing geometric series is an extremely helpful skill for this type of thing. Okay, so we can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to one half of the derivative with respect to x of one over one minus x. That's the sum of that geometric series. But now we can take the derivative of this, that'll leave us with the limit as x goes to one half of one over one minus x quantity squared. So you can calculate that derivative maybe using the chain rule. But notice if we plug a half into this, which we're allowed to do because that function is continuous at one half, we get one over one quarter. In other words, we get the number four. Okay, so let's maybe add that in right here. We know that four is equal to this sum. Let's maybe put a box around this as that will, like I said before, be used to construct our identity. And now let's look at this second one. So it's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity minus one to the n over two times n plus one. But instead of looking like a derivative like this one did, it looks like an antiderivative. In fact, this looks like the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of, let's see, minus one to the n times x to the two n plus one over two n plus one, where we evaluate that between zero and one. So that's like a zeroth integral, if you will. Plugging in zero nets us zero and plugging in one nets us this sum. Okay, but now we could maybe rewrite this as the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the integral from zero to one of minus one to the n times x to the two n dx, where there we use the fundamental theorem of calculus to take us from a zeroth integral to a first integral. But now let's exchange the order of summation and integration. That'll leave us with, let's see, the integral from zero to one of the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus x squared all to the nth power dx. But now we've got a geometric series again. Instead of the common ratio being x like we had before, the common ratio is now minus x squared. So we know that this will sum to one over one minus the common ratio, which in this case will be one over one plus x squared. 
But now taking the antiderivative there, we'll see that we get the arctan of x evaluated between zero and one. And so that gives us pi over four. Now we can sneak a pi over four into this. And then let's maybe box that as this will be the second portion of the identity that we build. Okay, so now let's move on to the main idea of this video, which is making your own series identity. Now that we've built these two kind of basic identities, we're ready to ratchet it up and build our fancy identity. And as you might guess, based off the structure of those, we'll take their product. That's because pi over four times four is equal to pi. And that's really a nice number to have as the value of our series. So that means we will have pi is equal to, like I said, the product of those two. So this is gonna be equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n over two times n plus one times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of n over two to the power n minus one. But then how do you write down the product of two infinite series? Well, you use something called the Cauchy formula for the product of two series. And that formula should be on the screen right now if you need to review it. But it ends up giving you the following object. So we'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, and then inside of that sum, we'll have a finite sum. m will go from zero up to n, and then we'll have the nth term of our starting series and the n minus nth term of our second series. So this will be minus one to the m over two times m plus one times n minus m over two to the n minus m minus one. So like I said, we get the nth term of our first series and the n minus nth term of our second series. That's, like I said, the rule for taking the product of two series. Okay, so now we're gonna change the order of summation. And we can think about how to do that by looking at the following array. So let's maybe say the m axis is the vertical axis and the n axis is the horizontal axis. And then I'll put these dots for like the zero part, the one part, the two parts, so on and so forth. Okay. So notice we're gonna fill in a complete lattice of these dots. So that's just the M in plane. But which portion are we summing over? Well, we sum from N equals zero to infinity, but M only goes from zero to N. But that'll be everything in this lower triangle. So in fact, we're summing only over the lattice points that are in this lower triangle. Okay, great. So now if we change the order of summation, then that means the outer sum will take m from zero to infinity, but the inner sum will take n from m to infinity. So in this case, it would be three to infinity, then four to infinity, so on and so forth. So that's gonna allow us to rewrite this as the sum as m goes from zero up to infinity, the sum as n goes from m up to infinity of minus one to the m over two times m plus one, and then n minus m over two n minus m minus one. But I'm gonna simplify this a little bit by multiplying the numerator and the denominator here by two. That's just gonna cut out the minus one in the denominator. Then in the numerator, we'll have two n minus two m. So something like this. Okay, so that's good. And now we're gonna do a change of index here just to make this look a little bit nicer. And let's do our change of index by replacing every n with n plus m. And notice when n 
plus m is equal to m, that means that n is equal to zero. So that'll re-index my starting point down to zero. Okay, so in the end, we have the sum as m goes from zero to infinity, the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, and then we'll be left with minus one to the m over two to the n, Again, we replaced every n with n plus m, so that means that n plus m minus m will just give us n, and I've kind of changed the order of what's going on here, and then times 2n over 2m plus 1. So this 2n minus 2m under this change of index just turns into 2n. And look, we've got this nice formula. So we've got this geometric series type thing right here, and then another portion of it is like this ratio of two polynomial type things in different variables. But now putting this all together, maybe in this box over here, we've just derived a nice formula for pi. And that is we have pi equals the double sum as m and n are both bigger than or equal to zero. So I can just rewrite the double sum like this. And then we'll have minus one to the m over two to the n and then two times n over two m plus one. And there is maybe the best way to write this. So I've done other videos on the channel where we look at infinite sums. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.